Have you made a capital gain? And now you're probably wondering, how do I actually report that gain to HMRC? Well, today I'm gonna show you how to report a capital gain on a self-assessment tax return. Welcome to Tax UK, the practical tax channel. Please like and subscribe so we can continue to make the content that is gonna save you time and money. Now, before we jump into this, I just wanna point out a few key things. Number one, the self-assessment is not the only way that you can report a capital gain. There is also a real-time reporting service that you can use, which is useful where you don't usually complete a self-assessment tax return. There is also a different process when you sell property, as typically you will need to report the disposal shortly after the sale. Often it's going to be the solicitor that is going to do that on your behalf. Number two, not every gain needs to be reported. There is a £12,300 capital gains tax allowance and where your total gains in a tax year are less than £12,300, then usually it won't need reporting at all. Now, I say usually because there are a few rarer circumstances that would require you to report a total gain less than £12,300. Typically though, this occurs when the total proceeds, and that's the amount that you achieve on the sale or that you are deemed to have received when disposing of the assets, is greater than four times the capital gains allowance, which currently would mean proceeds exceeding £49,200, plus where you are already registered for self-assessment. And if you meet these two criteria, then you would still need to report the gain, even though there wouldn't actually be any tax payable. Now, let's jump across to the iPad and we'll run through the entries that need to be made if you are reporting a capital gain via the self-assessment tax return. Now, I'm logged in here to my 2021 tax return in my tax account and to report a capital gain, the first thing that you're going to need to do is inform HMRC when tailoring your return. So, if you enter the tailor your return section, on the first page, you'll need to inform HMRC that you actually had a capital gain and that you need to declare that on this self-assessment tax return. So on the first page, you'll need to enter any relevant information if you have employment income, partnership income, property income. For this example, I'm just going to focus on the capital gain. So I'm going to say no to the rest of the questions that are on this page. But at the bottom here, you'll see the capital gains question. And it says, if you disposed of a chargeable asset or had any chargeable gains, or you wish to claim an allowable loss or make any other claim or election, do you need to complete the capital gains section? Please check help before selecting. So in this case, I'm going to say, yes, I have a capital gain that I've determined needs to be declared to HMRC and by selecting yes, it's going to generate the capital gains section of the return. Now, I'm going to skip through the second two pages of tailoring your return. But again, you would need to answer the questions appropriately for your situation. If you gave money to charity, tell them. If you had a tax advisor, tell them. If you had self-employed income, tell them. Uh, but again, for simplicity in this example, I'm just going to say that I only had the capital gain. OK, now, once you've done that and you're on the check your progress or fill in your return section, you can see here a lot of these sections that are on screen now are permanent. You can't get rid of them. The tell us about you section, you can see that in bold here. The tailor your return section, uh, underpaid tax, overpaid tax, adjustments to tax due. These are all permanent. You can't get rid of these. The only section that I have self-generated um, by filling out the tailor your return section is capital gains. Okay. Now, I'm going to click on the link below capital gains and drill down into this section and we can start to enter the detail of those gains. So first of all, you'll need to commit to provide honest and accurate information on the return. If you scroll down, there is a little bit of guidance here. You can read through this if you're unsure of what you're doing each 
link will drop down and give you a bit more information and often there's detailed guidance in there so it can be useful if you're not too confident at the bottom it asks you did you dispose of chargeable assets worth more than forty nine thousand two hundred pound i'm going to say no in this situation remember why they do that though um there are some gains that don't need reporting but in certain situations if you disposed of an asset uh, of a high value they will want to know about it anyway on your tax return but in this case we'll say no are losses deducted so typically when you dispose of an asset you'll either dispose of it for a profit or a loss um, and you may do both at the same time so most of the time or all of the time actually if you have a loss in the same tax year as a gain that loss has to be used in that tax year you have to offset that loss against that gain until your gain reaches zero um, if your loss exceeds your gain, then you can normally carry forward that loss. And we'll have a little look at how you do that in a minute. Now, in this example, uh, we'll say no. And then it generates a, a third question. Are your taxable gains more than £12,300? I'll say yes. Again, we already know why they're asking that question. Uh, total gains under 12,300 aren't normally reportable unless certain criteria are met. And then you can save and continue on to the second page. Again, a little bit of help for filling out the return, a bit of information at the top of the page. And then you're asked, do you want to use the capital gains computation worksheet for any of your disposals? Now, I can show you what this looks like, but my advice is normally if you have one or two gains, maybe you're disposed of an investment property, uh, then the computation is actually very useful. Let's have a quick look at it. So select yes, and then on to the next page. This is the information that they want. Now, every capital gain that you report, you need to provide information of how you arrived at your figure, at your gain or loss figure. Um, so if you have one or a couple of gains, you might want to use their pre-generated computation. You provide details of the, the disposal, the type of asset that it was, description of the asset, the date you disposed of it, the proceeds, um, the costs, and you would just fill out all of the relevant information here. Now, I'm going to delete this section here, this computation, by deleting worksheet, and then return back to this page. Um, I'm going to say that I do not want to use the the, the worksheet or computation that are, that's provided. Now, I'll do this because in my example, I'm going to assume that I've been selling shares. And this will apply to a lot of people. If you're selling shares uh, in listed companies or cryptocurrencies as well, quite often you have hundreds or maybe thousands of disposals. So filling out a computation for each disposal isn't going to work. In fact, I think you can, can only fill out 20 pages of their own computation. So the other option is to actually attach a document which provides all that detail. Now, in most trading accounts, you can run a tax year summary and it will tell you uh, exactly how much of a gain, how many disposals, all the details that you need. So if you have a lot of disposals, it's normally easier to do that. Go and generate that report and then select no to this and we will attach that document to uh, the computation so that HMRC know how you arrived at your figures. Now, one thing that I would point out, and I'm going to link this in a card, another video, you should go and check this out. I highly recommend that you learn a little bit about matching rules, which apply to disposals of shares and disposals of cryptocurrencies as well. Uh, check out that video. It'll give you the basics. Very short, quick video, but provides all the details that you know. Uh, but there are certain rules that apply. So you have to match your shares in a certain order when you dispose of them um, and that can impact the amount of gain now it's important that if you use a a summary from a trading platform like trading 212 or coinbase or whoever it is if you use one of their summaries you need to make sure that they are applying those matching rules that apply here in the uk because they might not apply elsewhere in the world and um, one way that you can do this there is you can check their calculation 
If you go to cgtcalculator.com, you can take an export uh, in Excel of all your transactions, input it here, and it will apply all of those matching rules. You can then just make sure the two figures agree, and then you'll know that they've been applying them correctly. Alternatively, you can keep your own spreadsheet if you really wanted to, okay? So we're gonna say no to this question and then move on to the next page. Uh, we've then got to indicate what type of asset we've disposed of. Now, listed shares, quite easy. You can select more than one if you've got mo multiple disposals. Um, for those that are disposing of cryptocurrencies, there's not really a good fit here. Um, so you'd have to put that under other property assets or gains for the moment until HMRC probably add a new section at some point. Um, but again, in this example, I'm talking about listed shares, shares that are trading on a stock exchange uh, or recognized stock exchange and then I'm going to move on to the next page. Um, you'll then see what looks like a computation. Now this is a little bit different so we're not going to provide a computation for every single disposal of shares that I've made um, but we're going to provide some details. Now if you have ran that report from your trading platform that report will normally provide all of this detail that you need here, okay? And you would just transfer the numbers across from your, your tax year report from that trading platform. And it might tell you that you've made 100 disposals in the tax year. It might tell you that you your total proceeds, the total amount that you achieved was £20,000. Um, your allowable costs, you don't need to break this down. Uh, on this page, but it might be that your allowable costs, your purchase costs, your, your fees, etc., totaled £5,000, uh, and you had a gain, a total gain in the year of 15000 Now, just remember, those are gains before losses are deducted. If you also had losses in the same tax year, we'll, we'll put that in as an example here, you can enter that here. So I'll say that we've got £1,000 of losses in that same tax year. Now, remember, losses in the same tax year as a gain need to be allocated against that gain. So instead of having a £15,000 gain here, I will have a fourteen thousand pound gain you cannot just carry that loss forward now that's a little bit annoying because if you have a gain of say twelve thousand pound which is already covered by your capital gains tax allowance and you have a loss of five thousand pound it would be useful if you could carry that loss forward and use it in a different tax year because your gain is already covered, you wouldn't pay any tax anyway. It's covered by the capital gains allowance. You can't do that, unfortunately. So you have to reduce the gain down to zero. If you end up in loss territory, if you have more losses than gains, then any excess below zero, you can carry forward. Okay, but just be aware of that. Um, total gains or losses uh, reported on a real time transaction. Now, remember, I told you there are two ways to report gains or, or more than one way to report gains. If you have used the real time reporting service and you told HMRC already, I've had this gain plus you submit a tax return, then you need to let them know that you've already reported it by filling out these two boxes here at the bottom. Of course, if you haven't reported it, these boxes will be blank, but what you don't want to do is be taxed once and then on, on the real-time reporting service and then be taxed again uh, via the self-assessment tax return. So you have to let them know of that overlap there. Are you making any claims or elections? There are certain claims you can make, uh, and again, elections uh, that might reduce your taxable, uh, your tax payable. I'm going to say no, because this is going to be a very basic example. We then move on to the treatment of losses. OK, so this can get a little bit confusing, uh, but losses bought forward is your top box. You can see at the moment it's showing total gains at the top £15,000. Now, that's not taking into account at the moment the £1,000 loss that I made in the same year. Um, we'll see that at the end of the return. So total gains 15000 although in my head I know I'm only going to get taxed on 14000 because I had a £1,000 loss in the same in the same tax year. So loss is bought forward. If in a previous tax year you have made a loss and you didn't have anywhere to utilize that loss, you didn't get your relief, you can roll it forward to a, another tax year. If you then want to utilize that loss against a gain in this in a future tax year, so this one for example, 
You enter that amount here, the amount of gain that you want to use, uh, the amount of loss that you want to use, sorry, and that will reduce your, your total taxable gains down. Now, what's useful is that when you're carrying a loss forward to a future tax year, then you do not need to reduce that gain down to zero. So in this case, I've got £15,000 of total gains. I've got a £1,000 uh, loss, which is already going to be utilised. That leaves me with taxable gains of 14000 Remember, I have my £12,300 capital gains allowance. So if I had a £10,000 loss being carried forward, I don't need to use that full 10000 here. I can use that in the most tax efficient way. The most tax efficient way would be to use £1,700, which would bring my total £14,000 gain down to 12300 and then that would be covered by the capital gains allowance, okay? So you can be, once you're carrying a loss forward, then you can be selective about how you're actually utilizing that loss, okay? Again, I'll leave it blank for the moment. Income losses set against gain. So this will be a little bit rarer, but if you have self-employment, for example, and remember, you can use a drop down. If you're wondering what any of these are, you can use a drop down to get a bit more detail. But if you had self-employment and you made a loss in that self-employment, you can potentially bring that loss across and offset it against gains in the same tax year. Again, use a drop down, make sure that you actually qualify and meet the criteria for these things. Loss is available to be carried forward. So 2020, 2021 capital losses to be carried forward. Remember what I said, if you have losses being bought forward, they can be carried forward indefinitely until you have a, a gain to utilize them against. If you make a, more losses in the current tax year than you made gains, then that can be carried forward as well. And you'd combine the balance of those two and make sure you're carrying it forward. Okay, you need to be carrying losses forward in this box. Otherwise, if you try to utilize them in a future tax year, HMRC are going to wonder where they actually came from. So make sure you're carrying everything forward. Forward. Loss is used against an earlier year's gain. So in certain circumstances, um, the one I can think of is when you die, um, obviously you can't carry your loss forward any further. So HMRC actually provide you with an additional uh, relief where you can carry that loss back and offset it against previous gains. Unlikely to apply in this situation, but useful to know what they're talking about with these boxes. Gains qualifying for investors relief. Again, certain gains, investors relief normally applies to unlisted companies, private companies. So if you had your own company, you may qualify for certain reliefs, i.e. investors relief, um, and you pay less or no tax on that. Again, unlikely to apply here, uh, as our example is listed shares sold on the stock exchange. Uh, gains qualifying for business asset disposal relief. Again, certain business assets qualify for similar reliefs. Uh, you would need to check the guidance below and detail it here. And you would need to make sure you haven't exceeded your, your lifetime allowance by detailing any previous claims in the box below there. Adjustment to capital gains tax. Now, in all the time that I've been submitting self-assessment tax returns, I have never made an adjustment to capital gains tax. This is more likely to apply, I think, if you've been paying foreign, you've got foreign tax credits, uh, but very unlikely in this case. And again, um, additional liability for non-resident or dual resident trusts. So quite rare examples here. Most people are going to be leaving these blank. Do your computations include any estimates or valuations? Ideally, you want to be saying no to this. There are circumstances where it's better to make an estimate and get a figure in um, and then come back and adjust it later. But just bear in mind, if you say yes, HMRC will probably probably be expecting you to come back at a later date and make an adjustment. So I'm saying no to that one. Now, remember, if you haven't used HMRC's uh, manual computation, then you need to provide some detail um, of how you arrived at your figures. And you can do that by attaching a file here. So like I said, in the case of shares or cryptocurrencies, you might pull a report from your trading platform, uh, normally the tax year summary, and that will tell you how much of a gain you made in a tax year. You might use the CGT calculator uh, to make sure everything's been matched 
match correctly. Or you might keep a manual calculation. If you disposed of a residential property, for example, or a few residential properties, and you keep a spreadsheet to keep track of all your gains, you can attach that here. It is something to show HMRC how you arrived at your figures. If you're wondering what figures to include, go and look at the manual calculation or the manual computation that we looked at previously, because that tells you all of the information that HMRC are looking for. I'm going to skip this and move on to the next page. And then you are provided with a blank box. Now, if you haven't used the, the HMRC computation, if you haven't attached a document, you need to provide detail in this box. It is not an option to not provide details. In fact, if I try to move on to the next page, save and continue, it's going to tell me you haven't provided any detail or attached any documents. So if you did have something very simple, maybe I sold one uh, one share is a bad example, but if I sold uh, 50 shares of Apple at $150, you could write that in here manually, providing you're giving them all the detail that they need, that would be acceptable as well. But if I put something in this box, it will then allow me to continue. OK, and that's the capital gain section um, completed. What you do want to do, though, is then click on view your calculation. You'll normally need to scroll to the bottom and click on next to go into your calculation. And you can then see how HMRC have actually calculated your tax bill. Now, this page isn't very detailed, but if you scroll down to the bottom, we can see that I've got a 170 pound tax bill because I didn't detail any employment income, any other income, it was purely that capital gain. But if you scroll down to the bottom and you can click on view and print your full calculation, this will actually show you how HMRC arrived at this number. So you can see at the top of the page, my personal allowance doesn't apply to capital gain. So it's kind of being wasted here, but it is mentioned at the top. Below that, we've got a calculation of my capital gain. And you can see I've been taxed on £1,700. Now, that sounds like a, a strange figure to be taxed on, given the numbers we entered. But remember, we had £20,000 of proceeds, £15,000 of expenses, uh, and leaving us with a £15,000 total gain. We did mention in there as well that we had £1,000 of losses in that same tax year. Now that brings our total taxable gain down to £14,000 because that loss has to be utilised in the same tax year when there are gains available until the gain is reduced down to nil. After that, it's then taken into account my £12,300 capital gains tax allowance, leaving us with £1,700, which is taxable. Now, listed shares, cryptocurrencies, and most other assets are taxed at a lower rate of capital gains tax. If you are a basic rate taxpayer or you have basic rate band available, then you'll pay 10% tax on those. If you are a higher rate or additional rate taxpayer, maybe you've got employment income um, that puts you into that category, then this will be showing as 20% tax and it would charge you 20% here. If you had disposed of and told HMRC that you had disposed of uh, residential property, not your main residential property, because that is normally exempt from capital gains tax, but if you had investment properties buy to lets, um, then usually you pay a higher rate of tax. The rates are 18% and 28% depending on which tax banding you belong to. But it's definitely recommended that you come to this calculation page and work back through it. Make sure you're happy with how the tax has been calculated rather than just accepting that, well, that's the amount that's showing because there can be errors in the calculation. Once you're happy and you've declared all of your other income, you can then submit that return to HMRC and pay any subsequent tax liability. There you have it. Those were all of the entries required to correctly report a capital gain on the self-assessment tax return. Please like and subscribe for more practical tax.